say? Ah. Oh God, it's too hot down here. I'm going back inside work on the arcade. Hey guys, welcome back to Mavericks Arcade. My name is Chuck and today we are going to be talking about our arcade one-up machine. Now, if you followed us before, my daughter and I assembled an NBA Jam arcade one-up machine. Now, the thing is, the reason why I use the word assemble is because when I think of building an arcade, I think of planning it out, what you're going to do with it. In my case, I built it from, you know, straight up two by fours and plywood and did everything myself uh, and taught myself as I win. I am not good at woodworking by any means. Now, that's not to discredit uh, the people who buy the one-up machines and just leave them as is. If it's their favorite game, more power to them. Uh, the only reason why I use the word assemble is because it's basically uh, like assembling a piece of Ikea furniture. It's not very difficult to do, uh, but again, if that's all you want, it's your favorite game as a kid, go for it, great. For me though, I didn't buy it for the purpose of having an NBA Jam game because honestly, I don't even like basketball that much. So the reason why I bought it though is because it has four players, three buttons per player, and I've been looking for a way to start practicing with the Raspberry Pi. Now I don't wanna go and redo all the configuration of my PC arcade because that's a lot of work and I don't want to have to redo it. But I also don't want to pay for wood right now because it's ridiculously expensive. So what I figured is, uh, luckily as I was going by Walmart, the guys, I saw it, I was going to shamelessly self promote this channel, you know, trying to grow it. And he's, uh, told me that he runs a channel as well. And then as I was walking away, he told me um, that he got it for a hundred bucks. Now this machine normally goes for 400. So the time of rebuilding another arcade machine, the wood costs, everything like that, this just made a lot of sense. So it allows me to also answer some of the questions that some of the viewers have had as far as arcade one up machines. It's also going to allow me to work with the Linux factor of a Raspberry Pi. Uh, which includes, you know, LCD commander and things like that. But also my, uh, current machine is very, very large. So to do some of the other cool customizations I want to do, it would cost a lot. So in my case, we're going to be doing a lot of modding, and this is going to be the first part of a multi-part series on upgrading your arcade one up machine. So if you have not liked and subscribed, please do that now. On to the arcade. Now, uh, the first step that I need to do for the arcade is the built-in screen. I need to make it so it will accept an HDMI signal or DVI or VGA. In this case, I'm gonna be using HDMI. So I found a board on uh, Amazon and I'll include a link in the description below. So go ahead and check it out. But uh, again, not a sponsor, but it was only like 25 bucks. And what that includes is it includes an LCD controller board and then it includes a little keyboard. Now they say keyboard, but it is the power volume menu buttons. Um, no one's really going to be using this. It's going to be inside the arcade and inaccessible to the normal user, but it also includes a keyboard cable. And then there is a power inverter that it includes and the associated cable. We're not gonna be using the power inverter in the NBA Jam because that power inverter is already inside the display itself. And luckily the way that it's wired, we don't have to try to mess with the power inverter. We can just use the existing one and save the other power inverter for God knows what. So then the last cable that comes with the kit is the signal cable. Now this is the cable that will plug the LCD controller into the display. And again, I'm not using the one that came for, with this kit because of the back of the display, as you will see, already has a signal cable coming out of it. It was 
So we got an outfit change and the reason why is because now I'm editing my videos and I realized as I'm working with the footage and getting used to having various clips to piece together, I accidentally deleted a portion of the video for this next part. So I'm gonna go ahead and describe it to you. Uh, but again, changing the way I do the videos a little bit, you guys have been with me the longest, uh, know that I usually would try to record straight through just so I can get the content out quickly. However, if I want to grow this channel, I need to do everything the little analytics say I need to do, including like B-roll footage and different angles and stuff like that. Plus, you know, I have some suggestions from you guys that I definitely want to incorporate. Uh, for example, while building the arcade one up, I just had a lot of sped up footage and uh, one of my users said, hey, why don't you actually, you know, try to do a voiceover on top of it. So I'm trying to incorporate these changes, make the channel better for you guys that have already been following me and to try to get more, again, more subscribers more uh, possibility to possibly get a sponsorship at one point, which would help me get equipment so I can test more stuff for you. So anyway, if you're one of those viewers that do like my videos but haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and take a second to do that now. But otherwise, let's get back on with the instructions. So the arcade one-up machine, the footage that I was missing was to open up the back panel and remove the top panel. Uh, to do that, what you need to do is loosen the screws. You don't need to take them out or undo them all the way, but just loosen them enough so there's some flexibility so you can separate the sides just enough to get the top panel and the bottom panel to come out. Once you've done that, you'll see the back side of the arcade is opened up, and inside there is a panel like this one here. And this panel um, just contains the existing original circuit board that's used with the arcade one up processing stuff. So we got to remove this. And to remove that, there are these little screws. Now the head is a PZ1 uh, screw uh, bit. So go ahead and put that in and then again, remove the four uh, screws around this case. Also make sure to disconnect any audio connections, uh, disconnect the ribbon cable uh, so that that box is completely uh, disconnected. The ribbon cable you see coming out of the bottom, that goes down to the back of the control panel. Just go ahead and disconnect that. So once you've got it unscrewed, you can see the cables are pretty short, uh, but you can see the circuit board inside and you can see there's the wires that have the blue and white and the red. That is your video signal. And then you have the uh, cluster that has the red, yellow, and black. And that is the power for the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those um, and let them hang free. And then just remove the metal plate with the board still inside. We're not gonna need that, just put it to the side. So now we're left with the two wires hanging out of the back of the screen. And the one wire you can see is connected to the ground. Uh, or is grounded on the back of the shell of the screen. So you have these cables here. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our circuit board. Now in my case, um, you wanna make sure that this board does not touch anything conductive. That is one thing it did say on the back of the instructions is to make sure that it's free of any conductive materials. So I took a piece of wood and I cut it to the size of the board. And here, what I'm doing is I'm just using a Sharpie to mark those screw positions on that piece of wood. Once I finished that, I went ahead and wrapped the board in electrical tape to, again, just ensure that there's no conductivity, that if the board gets warm, it won't transfer a lot of that heat to the wood. And you can see the little bumps from where the screw holes were prior. So what you want to do is you want, once you've taped up the board and it looks like this, go ahead and poke through those holes again so that the screw holes from uh, our previous drill are exposed. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and attach the board. Make sure that the screws that you're using are smaller than the uh, space on the board. So you can see there's a space or little marks around where the screw hole is. Just make sure that the head of the screw does not exceed that. Also make sure that the length of those screws does not go through the other side of the wood. In my case, I believe these are quarter inch screws uh, because that piece of wood is a half inch piece of wood. After which I took a piece of a uh, double-sided um, Velcro and I'm using the word Velcro because it is Velcro brand in this case, not a sponsor. Um, I think otherwise they call it hook and loop 
because of uh, copyright reasons. But in any case, go ahead and stick that on that piece of wood. And the next thing we're going to do is attach the cables to the board. Um, so you have the uh, blue and white cable with the red uh, wires. You want to make sure that the red wires connect on the side of the pins where the little arrow is. Um, if you're looking at the board in the same angle as this, it'll be the, you know, the top part of the board. Then you connect the power, um, the red, yellow, and black, uh, wires in that little block. Make sure to connect those as shown in the picture. Then also you want to connect the keyboard, what they call the keyboard to this jack. And then the other end that has the red connector goes on the other end of the keyboard as shown in the picture, slightly behind the main board. Once that's been done, go ahead and stick the board to the back of the screen. Again, the back of the board, back of that piece of wood has the double-sided tape. Now you can see I left a little uh, bit of extra space on the board at the top here. And the reason why is because I can put in a hook screw and hook the wires and kind of route them that way. So that that way the wires aren't uh, hanging straight down and likely to fall out due to gravity or you know too much motion. So by putting a hook up in the top of this piece of wood and then zip tying the cables to it, we'll ensure that during transit they don't shift too badly and disconnect. So now that all the wires are connected, let's go ahead and see if the screen works. All right, so the screen is now ready to be used and connected to an HDMI, DVI, or VGA source. The reason why we're doing this is this is in prep to install a Raspberry Pi and to get rid of the remaining Arcade 1UP components. In uh, future videos, we'll be modifying the control panel, installing LED um, controls, and replacing the controller sticks. We're also going to be doing a couple other um, tweaks and customizations to this arcade one up and by the time we're done it's not going to be anything like an original arcade one up machine other than the shape of the box so make sure if you haven't subscribed yet to go ahead and subscribe also uh, make sure to follow us on our facebook page uh, i'm going to be doing some things on there including trying to set the bot up to answer the messenger to answer frequently asked questions and so forth so uh, make sure to comment below. Let me know how you think of this video as far as the more editing and uh, take a little more time during that process and see, let me know if it's working for you. And again, make sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and there's going to be a lot more cool stuff coming up soon. Um, I'm doing a lot of things to try to, to improve that quality and uh, get a little more popular. So make sure to uh, share this. And uh, if you know anybody else that's into arcade stuff, send them my way and let me know what you guys think. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.